Hey guys, it's Jessie V. Guess what time it is? It's V time. So before I get into the story, I want to talk about a few things that are on my mind. So I've been looking through a lot of the comments on my videos and there were some people asking me to do something other than V time. Like someone suggested like a Q&A video. The thing with Q&A is I find it to be so boring. I'll probably do it sometime down the line. It's just right now V time is like my thing, you know? I love doing V time. I love dramatically telling you stories of things that have happened in my life. And someone was like, well, what if you run out of stories to tell? I'm 21, so every single day of my life that I have lived, something has happened to me. So I can do this channel for like five years of V time and not run out of stories. It's kind of what makes this channel unique for me because V time is something that I made up, you know? I want to tell stories. It reminds me of like little kids when they're in school and the teacher's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And kids are like, I want to be a doctor, a dentist, a surgeon, a vet. And I'm just here like, I want to tell stories. I, I want to do V time. But in saying that, I am going to have some special guests do some videos with me every once in a while. But I want this channel to be mainly V time. With that that being said, let's get into some V-time. So this video is called My Pet Praying Nantis, but it's actually going to be about other pets that I've had as well. And when I say pets, it's either animals that I've owned or strange bugs that I have caught. So when I was really young, I had an ant farm, and I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. It was like this really thin, kind of boxy, plastic thing that had sand in it and when you put the ants inside of it they kind of made their own like ant hill and you can like see inside of the ant hill it was so cool like you could see all their tunnels and stuff so what I didn't understand was that you cannot put red and black ants in the same ant hill you just can't you just can't do that but when I was young I thought that all insects loved each other I thought they were all friends all insect friends. Like, I remember I used to go outside with a jar to collect my ants. And it was so horrible because, like, I'd see, like, this ant hill on the ground, and, like, I'd just be like, Rah! And I would just, like, stuff my hand on top of it and just take it off and put it in the jar. Like, I disturbed all these ants. It's like they are probably, like, having a nice dinner, you know, sitting all at the table in their little ant hill. Some of them might have been watching TV. And all of a sudden, this giant hand just comes down and just completely takes them out of their house. Like, imagine that happening to us. That'd be strange as hell. Anyway, so I disturbed the ants. I just kind of took them out of their home. I put them in my jar. So let's say if I had the red ants in there, I would be like, I need some variation in this jar. So I would like walk around outside and be like, here's some brown ants. Here's some black ants. Here's some ants that look kind of green. And I would just throw them in the jar. And I'd be like, oh, happy family. They all love each other. And I thought that, you know, them, like, attacking each other was, like, them running to give each other hugs. Like, I haven't seen you in so long, bro! And they would, like, hug, but no, they were probably eating each other's heads off. I thought it was love, okay? Anyways, I would go home and pour them into my little ant farm and watch them build tunnels. And for some reason, the red ants always won. So they would kill off all the other ants and then build their gigantic home in my ant farm. And I would see, like, all of these, like, dead black ants and, like, brown ants and stuff like that. And I'd be like, oh, daddy, they're sleeping! They're sleeping! And my dad would be like, no, Jess, they killed each other. <laughs> I was so stupid. Anyways, I love to do that. I probably made some certain ants go extinct. We'll never know. I started the ant wars. I take responsibility. Something else that I used to catch were grasshoppers. I just loved catching them in like butterfly nets and stuff. And like if you've ever caught a grasshopper, you know that when you go like this and hold them, they're constantly like jumping in your, your hands and it's kind of weird. But they always peed on me. And like their pee wasn't even like a regular yellow color. It was like this gross brown color. I don't even know. Blech. But I still caught them. So let me get into this praying mantis thing because I'm sure you're like, oh, that's what the video's called. Why are we hearing about praying mantis? Okay, you will. So my friend and I were hanging out in my backyard. So we saw like this like greenish shape moving in the grass. And we're like, what the hell? What is that? What is this in the grass? And we had never seen a praying mantis in real life before. So we went up and like this praying mantis was all like, I am praying. I am praying. And we were like, oh, it's a praying mantis. Oh my goodness. Let him pray. Shh. Let him pray. Let him Anyway, we were so in awe by this praying mantis that we got like this little box thing and took a leaf and kind of like put him in the box. Because we didn't know if he was like poisonous or if he like bites or what. He had these like creepy big eyes and like his long mantis arms that he just used. Whenever we like knelt down close to it, it'd be like, 
I don't think I like this very much. We had it for like two days and we loved it. We grew to love this praying mantis over a period of two days. Our box was like amazing. It had like grass, sticks, food, water. The praying mantis had a mansion basically. It was better than the outside world. And like we left the box out for one second to go inside and get some lunch. From the window of the kitchen, we could see the box in the backyard. And we saw this thing freaking like climbing over the box in a hurry to leave while it could. It was probably like, these stupid children are gone. I will leave. I will leave now. Anyways, like by the time we got outside, we couldn't find it. It was probably in the grass. Like they will never know. They will never know where I am. So we, we never found it after that. So I, I used to catch frogs as well. I'm sure a lot of you have too. But my sister and I, we each caught a frog. So we each had our own frog or toad or whatever it was. It was probably a toad. They were really big. Like my mom used to say like, oh, if you catch a toad, you're gonna get warts, blah, blah. I never got warts. I never got warts. Actually, I might've had one on my toe when I was like five, but that, that has nothing to do with frogs. So I don't know why I brought that up. Anyway, for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, ew, ew, she had a wart, ew. It's part of life, people, okay? It's part of life. It's gone now. It's not like I've had like a freaking 20 year old wart on my foot. Ew, that'd probably be like massive and like probably would have killed me by now. Anyways, we had these two frogs. I don't remember what we named them. Every single day we would have like frog contests to see like who can go the farthest. We'd do like frog races and like set up like the starting point and the end point and we each put our frogs like beside each other and we'd be like, go! I mean, sometimes they would move a little bit but they didn't really get very far. I mean, for frogs, they were very lazy or maybe they were just like, I am not doing anything for these children. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Anyways, one day, Mandy accidentally stepped on her toad, okay? And like, because we were little, it wasn't like she put a lot of pressure on it. Like, she was small and light. But like, I remember, she accidentally stepped on it, and we freaked out. We were like, oh no, Billy! Billy just died! So like, we went down to the grass. We were looking at it, and the frog had like, gone as flat as a pancake. Like, it was so flat, but it was still alive. Like, we were looking at it, it's like looking back at us, and it slowly puffs back up to its regular size and hops off. And we were like, what is this magic? This frog probably saw the foot coming down and was like, okay, pancake mode. It's like squished down, I don't know. So the next pet I had, it wasn't technically a, a pet. I used to collect sticks with my friend, and we would name them and dress them up in Barbie clothes. I can't believe I just admitted that. But yeah, we mainly did this at school. Whenever it was recess, we'd be like, oh, we have to go get our sticks. And like, we go to the back of the field and like there were our sticks lined up with Barbie clothes on. That sounds like a setup for like a psycho killer. Like when he was a little kid, he used to dress up sticks and now he's a killer. I am totally sane though. I am freaking sane. And the last one I want to talk about is a hamster that I had. It was actually technically my sister's. I think it was like a teddy bear hamster because it was like really big. Or maybe the hamster was just really fat. I don't know. Anyway, there's this one day where the hamster was just happily like roaming around its little cage, you know, in his little wheel thing. And my sister had like a glass of like water and walked up to it and was like, hamster needs a bath. And just like freaking like tossed the water over this hamster. And the hamster was like, holy shit, what just happened? And it was like soaking wet. And ever since that day, the hamster was like psycho. The hamster was like trying to eat everything in the cage. And like, whenever you went to pick him up, he would try and bite you. We would reach in to get him. And he would be like, no bitch, mm -mm, no bitch. He would just not let us touch him after that. Anyway, I mean, the hamster lived a long life. Like, it lived a long life. It was just absolutely off the wall crazy. The water that was poured on him probably went to his head and just messed him up. I don't know, I feel bad. I mean, we treated him beautifully after that moment because we were like, this hamster deserves a lot of love after that water. There are so many other things I could talk about. I've just insects and animals that I've had and found. I was a strange child, you know? Anyway, that is the end of V-Time for today. Please like and subscribe, share this video to show your support. Just hearing that you guys like V-Time makes me want to keep going. I put my Instagram and my Twitter in the description, so please follow. I love getting tweets from you guys. You're all awesome. You're all awesome. Anyways, until next time, bye.